Book 10 The Book of the Double Twilight Canto 3 The Debate of Love and Death But Savitri replied to the vague God Give me back Satyavan, my only Lord Thy thoughts are vacant to my soul that feels the deep eternal truth in transient things. Death answered her, Return and try thy soul. Soon shalt thou find appeased that other men on lavish earth have beauty, strength, and truth. And when thou hast half forgotten, one of these shall wind himself around thy heart that needs some human answering heart against thy breast. For who, being mortal, can dwell glad alone. Then Satyavan shall glide into the past, a gentle memory pushed away from thee by new love and thy children's tender hands, till thou shalt wonder if thou lovest at all. Such is the life earth's travail has conceived, a constant stream that never is the same. But Savitri replied to mighty death, O dark ironic critic of God's work, thou mockst the mind and body's faltering search, for what the heart holds in a prophet hour, and the immortal spirit shall make its own. Mine is a heart that worshipped, though forsaken, the image of the God its love adored. I have burned in flame to travel in his stead. Are we not they who bore vast solitude, seated upon the hills alone with God? Why dost thou vainly strive with me, O death, a mind delivered from all twilight thoughts, to whom the secrets of the gods are plain? For now at last I know beyond all doubt The great stars burn with my unceasing fire And life and death are both its fuel made Life only was my blind attempt to love Earth saw my struggle, heaven my victory. All shall be seized, transcended. There shall kiss, casting their veils before the marriage fire, the eternal bridegroom and eternal bride. The heavens accept our broken flights at last. On our life's prow that breaks the waves of time, no signal light of hope has gleamed in vain. She spoke, the boundless members of the God as if by secret ecstasy assailed, shuddered in silence, as obscurely stir 
Ocean's dim fields delivered to the moon. Then lifted up as by a sudden wind around her in that vague and glimmering world the twilight trembled like a bursting veil. Thus with armed speech the great opponents strove around those spirits in the glittering mist a deepening half-light fled with pearly wings as if to reach some far ideal morn. Outlined, her thoughts flew through the gleaming haze, mingling bright pinioned with its lights and veils, and all her words like dazzling jewels were caught into the glow of a mysterious world or tricked in the rainbow shifting of its hues, like echoes swam fainting into far sound. All utterance, all mood, must there become an unenduring tissue sown by mind, to make a gossamer robe of beautiful change. Intent upon her silent will she walked on the dim grass of vague, unreal plains, a floating veil of visions in her front, a trailing robe of dreams behind her feet. But now her spirit's flame of conscient force, retiring from a sweetness without fruit, called back her thoughts from speech to sit within in a deep room in meditation's house. For only there could dwell the soul's firm truth, imperishable, a tongue of sacrifice. It flamed unquenched upon the central heart, where burns for the high house lord and his mate the homestead sentinel and witness fire from which the altars of the gods are lit. All still compelled went gliding on unchanged. Still was the order of these worlds reversed. The mortal led, the god and spirit obeyed, and she behind was leader of their march, and they in front were followers of her will. Onward they journeyed through the drifting waves, vaguely companioned by the glimmering mists. But faster now all fled, as if perturbed, escaping from the clearness of her soul, a heaven bird upon jeweled wings of wind, born like a coloured and embosomed fire by spirits carried in a pearl-hued cave, on through the enchanted dimness moved her soul. Death walked in front of her, and Satyavan in the dark front of death 
a failing star above was the unseen balance of his fate.